Hi, my name is Chad Beasold. I own a farm here on Persimmon Grove near Gupster Mill, Kentucky, in California, Kentucky. I bought this farm in 2014 from my aunts and uncles. Uh, it used to be my grandma and grandpa's farm. Uh, once they both passed away, I bought it in 2014. We uh, recently built a house in 2018, and we uh, run a cow, cow calf beef operation here. We keep all of our calves back from all of our cows. We will raise them up to a starting weight where we will finish them on grain. Um, we run them, th we have a program called 12 Mile Beef between me and the rest of our family and in-laws. Where we have an online, online web store where customers can purchase uh, holes, halves, quarters, and 25 pound boxes. Uh, those are processed at a USDA facility here locally. And uh, we, we pride ourselves on no added hormones, no antibiotics, and anything that we sell through 12 Mile Beef. Some of the uh, management practices we've included here are we have uh, done some rotational grazing that we've added in, uh, heavy use areas, a manure stack pad, which is located here behind me, um, automatic waterers and pastures, and we've done a farm dump cleanup where we took all of the old garbage that used to be thrown in there from years and years ago, clean that all out to where we can better control that area and keep the weeds down and make it look a little bit better. Uh, I've done a lot of erosion control stuff of trying to keep the heavy areas in the winter where we feed at, knocked down with some gravel and concrete. Um, some of the things I factor in besides financial is I like to leave the land better than when I received it or when I, when I bought it. So a lot of these practices help um, keep from things just going backwards so we can kind of bring it into a better position than it was. Um, they help with controlling some invasive species on weeds and trees and shrubs and things like that that we can keep knocked down. And usually once you start implementing some of these practices, usually you find out down the road that it's actually more productive and usually more um, profitable in the end by doing these practices. I believe that the, the stewardship side is being able to, to change and make some of these changes constantly throughout your, your production cycle here. Um, you know, some of these things people don't like to do because it's a little bit of work in the beginning, but really it's really good, better off for the environment, for our land, um, just for the whole area. It gives us a better, a better image to everybody else then we're not just you know just farming out here we actually try to care for our land and do the best for it which sometimes most people don't think that's what we're typically trying to do and usually it's more productive and profitable for us in the end in five years i'd like to think i'd be just still heading in the same constant direction here we're continually improving every year um, there's plenty of practices out there that i haven't finished yet that i'd like to get done you know the conservation district helps with multiple other programs on the federal side through the USDA on, with EQIP, their state cost share programs, um, CAPE money out there, program grant programs that, you know, Conservation District does all the administrative work on that helps us do a lot of uh, advancements here every couple years where we can spend 5,000 and get 2,500 back on a 50-50 cost share program. So it's constantly helping us move forward. I think, you know, with Conservation District helping to push these heavy use areas pushing the USDA programs and the state programs allows a lot of producers to uh, utilize some of these programs that they may may not know that are out there as easily to access. So Campbell County Extension Office has helped me from my beginning when I first bought the farm to introduce me to some of these conservation practices and get me in contact with the people in the conservation district. Um, they, they do a lot working together and promoting these these ideas between you know, the University of Kentucky and Con or the conservation district, the extension offices. Um, some things that constantly help us are these, you know, more heavy use areas. I think our biggest thing as cattle farmers is mud in the winter and feeding areas, and that's where we struggle. These heavy use areas allow us to get some sturdy ground for these cattle to be on, get some out of the mud. Uh, these watering systems, we don't have to have our cattle tromp down through over the hill to get to a creek or a stream or a pond, and we can get them somewhere where we can manage the manure and keep the manure runoff from going straight and in back into their water source or even our water source which you know, ends up back in the river. Some of the things the Conservation District has helped me out with through uh, grants and uh, different programs that allow more funding for either manure management. Manure management be this manure pit stack pad that sits behind me. I can scrape 
all of the manure from this whole concrete lot into that and store it all winter and then we can apply it to the either pastures or hay fields in the fall. So we're not with the roof and everything, there's no runoff going off that manure until it's applied on the field and then at that point it goes straight into the soil. Um, that was through an EQIP program, so a, a USDA federally funded project, but a lot of the paperwork, administrative work still goes to the conservation district or they help with getting me the correct contacts to do those. Um, another one, which is on the other side here, was a heavy use area that we use to feed in the winter. Now we can feed our hay on this gravel lot where before it was in mud and cattle were just up to their, you know, their stomachs almost sometimes in mud if it was a real wet winter. So that was EQIP as well. Um, CAPE funding that we get from the tobacco buyout program, the 50-50 cost share through the county has allowed me to buy some cattle handling facilities so I can work these cattle safer and easier on my own if I need to. I don't have to have an extra hand sometimes. Um, they've helped buy some of this fencing, gates, this, these concrete pads, um, a lot of uh, these automatic waters that are sitting back here. You can see that was, that was bought with some cost share money at some point too. Uh, this fall we'll be starting a equip program of rotational grazing internal fencing that will be done on another side of the farm where we keep our cows and cows out through the summer. We'll be installing new fence internally there so we can move our cattle around to different paddocks and let the grass catch up over time and they're not constantly grazing on the same grass all the time. And then in each of those paddocks, we'll be installing automatic waters too that will come off of the city, city water source here instead of a pond that they currently get water from.